Hey yo, what's up? You know what it is. It's the one and the only, the triple, the G O D, live on Team GRF TV, and I'd like to welcome you guys back to another installment of Triple the God Speaks on and Yo, the King of Fighters Destiny, episode number seventeen, Black Crystal. Now, this episode picks up right where we left the last one. Uh, a lot of the things that we left with Keo looking at Chan like, yo, let me holler at you in the cut. You still got Robert and Benny Marvel arguing over Yuri's affections and a whole bunch of stuff that's going to come into that. But one of the major important things in this episode, because it's what I like to call an established episode. Because remember, we left a couple of episodes ago where... Geese is going bye-bye, and so is Angelina, and so is that running plot line of nothingness. Well, I wouldn't say it's nothingness. It, it gave Terry a chance to sit up her to establish that part of what we know of canon when it comes to SNK. But, but Angelina had to go. Geese had to fall off the tower. What they going to ultimately do with Geese, we'll see what they do with that. And more likely than not, we have not seen the last of one Geese Howard. Regardless of that, more importantly... We finally get our first real look at our main bad guy, Rugal Berenstein, calling these shots with Mature sitting up her feet and something. I don't know what she fed him. I wonder, do Rugal really know what's up with this guy that he's sitting up her getting all close to? Because the relationship that Rugal, Vice, and Mature share, the, the canon never really gets into it. The only thing that Rugal in the end knows and understands, even if he understands or knows it, is that they working for going it. So, when you going to get the Master of Wind in the mix? I really don't think that the King of Fighters Destiny is really going to drop him this early on. I'm like, we still got eight more episodes, including the one we're talking about now, and they still have to introduce Ayori Yagami. And that's what I'm assuming where Vice is going to come into the picture by dragging Iori by... Ch not by his own will or choice, in this mess that surrounds the Orochi and this black crystal that this episode revolves a whole lot around, and all that stuff getting together. To try to just get to the meat and the point of this episode is the following. We open the episode, Rugal being Rugal call the shots like, we got everybody in the building, do it. He tells the guy, hit that button, make a move. We later learn the move Rugal makes is like he's giving he 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 sent a big stinking nasty ass fart in this room where people gonna eat where where you still got Robert and Benny Maru arguing over stuff. My looking for where Andy is and and Rio being who Rio is sat up here and knocked down a whole tray of a whole a whole plate thing of cakes and I'm just like how you gonna waste all that cake, bro? Regardless. So Rugal says this big stinking nasty ass spark that knocks everybody out. Well, not everybody. Because remember at the end of the last episode, Keo looked at Chan and was like, yo, come holler at me, OG. So before this happens, Keo already with semi orders, I guess you want to say from Hotter to investigate what's going on, has left the room. The psycho soldier team follow him. And then they outside. While all of this is going down, unbeknownst to them. Chan and Keo were talking about what's going on here. Like, yo, I got I got a feeling OG something ain't right. Right enough for you, something ain't right, something ain't right. And yo would think, Yes, master. See if you can sense something with your psycho power. Understood, master. Athena trying to sit here and concentrate, and you got Kenso doing what Kenso do, just stuffing itself with meat buns, and she looks at him like, boy, if you don't quit this, then he finally quits it, and she's trying to concentrate. It seems that she senses the Orochi, but it blocks her use of psycho energy. So, it's kind of weird in that, because usually... Athena and the Orochi don't really get that into each other like that. Like, Athena understands what's going on, but she's trying to be an idol and trying to fight too and trying to train her chin to be the best she can be. We know that Kenso has a destiny that the games never let him have because he's Kenso. You will never get the girl. You will never have the true dragon psycho power. You will have nothing. 
why they treat my boy Kenzo like that, I do not know. But I just figured it was worth mentioning. Shout out to Bow. Shout out to Momoko. It was really good. Just, 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 just show, showing love. Shout out to Kairu. Hope you get out that wheelchair, girl. Look, so all this has happened. And after Ruger to sit the big stinking fart, everybody, everybody falling all over the place. Benny Moore were the first to fall, and everybody start follow, start following him, and they all gathered in a circle. What's going on? <laughs> Just laid out and everything. Rio is the is the one who 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 lasts the longest under this gas, and he sits up here and he finally fall out. Then some dudes we see at the beginning of the episode run into the room and sit up here like, real like, man, who is you? Shut up, punk. <laughs> Hit him with the butt of the gun and he going night night. Going back out to the Psycho Soldiers and Keo, they come back into the room where everybody was and they sitting up like, yo, what's going on? They just looking at each other trying to figure out what's really good. OG Chan like, he smells some gas. Yo, something ain't right. Yo, hold your breath while y'all up in here. This doesn't go under the notice of mature. And then you got Keo like, yo, let's split up. And I already see where this is going, right? I can already see it. But let me let me wrap with y'all and let y'all know what it is. Keo go one way by himself. And the Psycho Soldier team go another way. We see where the Psycho Soldiers end up. They end up in a room with a black crystal control, Kim, Choi, and Chang. And... You know it's about to get busy whenever it is they fight, and I'm assuming that's going to pop off next episode. Meanwhile, you got Keo over here in the cut, and you already know he finna fight Benny Maru and Daimon, so they sitting up here trying to give him the work, and finally Keo sits up here being Keo and actually being smart, like, yo, the black crystal around here somewhere, he sees a vent, sits up here, Throw some fire up into the vent and it burns the thing that is transmitting the energy of the black crystal. And this homie just fall out of it. Boom. Oh, and then um Hot Iron and the um and the Hungry Wolf show up. And by show up, I mean you see that plane while the ship is transforming into something else. I'm wondering this fit to become a is it is this really the sky knowing? Is this thing finna like lift up in the air? Is this finna become a speedboat? What is this? Um you, I, you know what? I already know what I was going to say. The answer you were looking for is this Spy Hunter. Well, Spy Hunter, the Interceptor was never that big and would never transform. Well, it well it did transform from a car to a boat to a helicopter. I'm like, but then you have um, Battle Formula, which was called Super Spy Hunter here for whatever reason Sunsoft had to do that. I think Battle Formula is a better name for the record, but, you know, I just love that thing for that first stage of Super Spy Hunter. We, we getting off top. Look, we got problems. Ruled and farted. Everybody laid out. Everybody controlled by the Black Crystal except Hot Earn, the Hungry Wolves, Keo, the Psycho Soldier Team, I have no idea where either Ralph or Clark are because they were completely MIA. They were completely MIA. Like, you saw them for like two seconds in that room with everybody else, and they've been MIA since. But, you know, they Clark Steele and Ralph Jones, so of course they know something going down. So they probably wouldn't be in that room. They probably in there setting more bombs, trying to blow things up. Who knows? Akari Warriors, bitch! Um... No, they, no they, they should scream Peregrine Falcons and let off the clip. That that That's a Metal Slug reference. I was, I was playing Metal Slug 2 Turbo earlier today. Don't, don't ask. Look, another great episode of the King of Fighters Destiny. And, again, because this was a great establishment episode is that I really have to wonder how ultimately we are going to get to the fight between Keo and... And Rugal, which you know is determined, but you also have to legitimately wonder is where is Saishu? Where is Saishu Kusanagi? I ask this because it's very important to the plot of KOF 94 where Saishu is, and then when Saishu does come back in a KOF 95, you have the question, like, huh, why? So you really got to wonder where he is. I'm like, in other news, and I just remembered it, they said where Takuma was. They Takuma said he ate something. He's like, man, nah, bro, man, I'm feeling sick, OG. Blah! Set up her, 
as, as A Lo Brown would say, sat up and gave the toilet some mouth beam. And by mouth beam, I mean throwing up in a toilet. But anyway, look, we have got a whole lot to do before we get to episode 24. It's like, I'm like, I don't see why they would do another side story because you don't really have any other characters to really build side stories around. Like, they they took the time to flesh out Angelina before she bit it. You got the opportunity to understand what it was between Geese and Jeff and how that ultimately figured into that whole little world that is, that makes up the core of what KOF is in Fatal Fury. As we all know and understand, and if you don't, now you do. We got a little bit of Keo and Benny Maru's backstory when it came to Benny Maru's side story and all of that, and we got a mention of Yuki, and no one has seen or heard from her, and I don't really think you will because... The games hardly pay attention to Yuki as a character. So, don't expect it, but I wouldn't be surprised, given what KOF Destiny does, that it does the thing like that. So, unless they really got some important story that they have to tell in a side story, I really think we, um, we, we, um, we, we, we pedal on, we pedal on the gas until the end of this. They've got seven episodes to... Whittle down the competition to the hero team versus Rugal. You have to give the streets what they want. That's their real fight between Terry and Keo. And you've got to introduce Iori somehow. Now, given what this episode was, and I'm just on this tangent before we get up out of here. The best way to probably do that is sit up here, let them go through the ship a little bit, and then just Iori just jump out of nowhere. That's what you do here. Fully, con- fully under the Black Crystal's command and all that stuff. And he just going right out of the blood berserk. And I really think that's the way they're going to do it. Because because they, they not geese off a tower. You don't really have the story to build around Billy and Edgy. And ultimately they beef with Iori after he tries to murder them later. So I really don't know like how they going to introduce Iori. And how that's going to affect the ring of character that the show is revolves around. But if they gonna do it, they need to do it in the next two to three episodes for it to have some impact. Not saying that he already just jumping out, going right out of blood on food ain't gonna have an impact. But if you really trying to sit up here and trying to get Keo and Terry to some, yo, let's bang it out, we homies, to this is a real threat and this is what it is and this is what beef is, I gotta settle this to let that be that forever beef They've got to do something and try to settle all these scores before they don't have any time to do so. See, this is why I have the microphone. But this is why I'm going to say I'm going to cut off the microphone and turn it into a video because that's a lot to take in. For even me, that's a lot to take in for this episode. Wonderful episode as usual. It's just that I just get on these really near the end of these and just be, what is this show going to do with the time it has left? I'm like, I know the show doing numbers, so I know that King of Fighters Destiny will probably get a season two. Or what you define that being a season two. I'd love if they release it on Blu-ray or something. And actually have the songs work and have it be a little bit better and all that good stuff. But we'll see. But turn this into a video. You know it's Saturday. I got work. I got work coming through. I had some work, but that work was quickly defeated by an understanding of something I should have already known. But I might show that to y'all anyway. I might show that to y'all anyway, because I, I I just want people to know that it exists. So we'll see about that. So I'm going to turn this into a video. How about that? Y'all go ahead and y'all get up out of here, man. You know who I am. I'm the one in the alley, the triple, the G-O-D, live on Team G-O-R-F TV. And I'd like to thank you for joining me for another installment of Triple the God Speak Song. And I only have the same question at the end of this as I always do. Are you okay? Ha <laughs> ha!